Hello and welcome once again to the Super Kids Show with Nora. I'm so excited to be here today. So why should you keep listening to the Super Kids Show? Because it is a program for you and your child. And it's simply about raising the now kids into super adults, okay? Super Kids super adults this program covers all aspects of a child's development be it the physical development the spiritual development the mental development and the social development okay we're gonna kick start the program with the spotlight session and on that segment we actually feature children doing marvelous things in their world and we have an amazing model and poet on the program today when it's time i'm going to showcase her and then right after that time we are going to be having the super conversation and today the topic is how to build confidence in your child and we have somebody spectacular amazing who is fit to help us in that particular conversation so don't go anywhere right after this break we are gonna start with the spotlight session I believe that I can be all of the best in whatever I do I am a super key I am a super key I am a super key we are super key this is the program for you and your child keep listening to the super kids show with Nora on Greatness the Super Kids Show with Nora, airing Thursdays 5 p.m. on Grace 95.5 FM. And glad to have you back. It's still the Super Kids Show with Nora. Right now, we move on to our spotlight session. Today, we're going to be having a poet okay so who are we featuring today on the spotlight segment she is a nigerian dutch model was born on june 18 2013 in tema ghana at age three her remarkable modeling talents were discovered by her mom and she has been in front of a camera ever since then posting as a muse for prominent photographers like mufe bamuyiwa an art and portrait photography journalist modeling for designers like slick clothes and juries and harry go to Nigeria and walk in the runway for various brands such as the charity event organized by La Mode Mag for the physically challenged. She received international spotlight and admiration on her sixth birthday when Alicia Keys reposted her birthday photoshoot pictures taken by the photographer Shagun Wells. She is also known for her work as a model for the prominent children's apparel brand Rough and Tumble. Interestingly, she's also a poet and she loves to read, tell stories, and loves to imitate. Her name is June Wise. All right, she's going to be delivering one of our original poems titled Talk. And here we go. Talk. So much to say. But words are few. Thoughts run deep. I watch the TV. And what's happening to children of my age and above push tears down my tender cheeks. Some taken to places they never wish to go, abused and threatened when they should be loved and protected. Again, a stream of tears tear to our walls. I want to talk, but words are few. Speak and let me speak until the flood of good words flush out the odd in this world. This hurt and pain, may it not remain. Talking is key, silence is worse. Let the whistle of fresh air be felt again. Let good voices pour words, and let it cut two hearts until peace and righteousness is formed. I want to talk some more, but words are few. May the light of mercy shine on every child the world over. May these few words I say be added to yours. 
Until we have a world we can happily live in. Enough is enough. This is really awesome. June is awesome. June is amazing. Children, please clap for June. This is really awesome. Thank you so much. That is beautiful. Beautiful plan. Beautiful delivery. Thank you so much, June, for having you on the spotlight session today. Right about now, we'll move on to the super conversation. And amazingly, we have June's mom today discuss with us on this super conversation segment. Permit me to introduce June Wise's mom. She is a mother of three amazing kids and um, she is a Nigerian. My husband is a Dutch, okay? And her name is Wendy Kendabi. All right, you're welcome to the show. Thank you for having you today on the program. Now, the topic for today is building self-confidence in your child. How to build self-confidence in your child. And I would like to ask this first question. What is self-esteem? What is self-confidence? We're going to be using esteem and confidence interchangeably. So what is self-esteem? Today, it is my pleasure to be on your show. Thank you for having me. Self-esteem is knowing your worth and value. That's simple. Self-esteem in general is a feeling that follow a person's sense of worthiness or unworthiness because this feeling heavily influences people's choices and decisions. While confidence, on the other hand, is having faith in one's own abilities. Esteem and confidence go hand in hand. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, can you give us some characteristics, you know, each of a child with self-esteem and a child with low self-esteem or confidence? Well, a child with self-esteem flagged with confidence always feel confident of themselves. They are proud of the things they can do. They are proud of the things they are capable and value themselves and their abilities. They are proud of the things they know they can achieve and want to try their best. True. Hmm. When kids are confident, and secure about who they are, they are more likely to have a growth mindset. At least uh, I have done my own little experiment uh, in my house. I have raised my kids in ways to believe in themselves, to know that they can, you know, they can achieve anything they put their mind to, they set their mind to, they can achieve it. But then again, being kids will require a little bit of you know, not, not a little bit though, but would require the support of an adult, you know, to help them achieve their potentials. Okay. So number one uh, would be, you know, children with high or self-esteem believe in themselves. They know what they want or need. They are goal-oriented and they have confidence in their own abilities. Yes. Rest assured that one may not see the results, you know, being a child, but when they grow up, knowing how groomed they were as kids and how they grew on the foundation to have confidence, to believe in themselves, to love themselves, that they are of esteem value, they grow with this characteristics and they become adults who are able to face difficulties handle challenges on their own so this is just like what you have in the institution you know from the crash level to the primary school and then to secondary school so you are building you are making inputs into that child's life by grooming the child from the first stage where the child is taught to read and write and then you're moving on to teaching the child the basics, you know, mathematics and so on and so forth. So all this thing takes time. It takes time to develop. So it's very important to start from the early stage of a child's life, start developing this 
characteristics in them start encouraging the child to embrace and love themselves. Children with low self-esteem feel they are not as good as other kids. This is why we must always, as parents, always speak positively to our children. Yes, there will come a time when you have to scold them. There will come a time when you will even scream. There will come a time when you will spank. There will come a time when you will say, but can't you just do something good for yourself for once but it shouldn't be a constant thing it shouldn't be the norm in the home because this thing eventually will have you know negative effect on the child there's nothing in this world that doesn't have side effect as parents it is important to be less critical about our kids least we forget it takes a village to raise a child. And so one may not know the number of critics the child have had to put up with daily, you know, internally or externally. They go to school, they have friends, they go to church, they go to birthday parties, name it. So we don't know how many times a person had had to talk down on them. So coming back home and be faced with their parents who should actually help them make it easier are also criticizing them. So your child begins to have doubts. They can do things well. Okay. Another aspect is that they lack confidence in themselves, uh, avoids a talk or challenge without even trying for fear of failure. It's important to know that these tiny beings look up to us adults and rely on us to help them reach their full potentials. And only positive vibes can help them achieve that. All right, thank you. Now I've been waiting to ask you this question. How did you discover June and her poetry skills? Okay, she's a model, she's also a poet. So how did you discover June and her poetry skills? How were you able to mold her, you know, to get to do what she does? I've actually watched some of her interviews. I've also seen her mimic or imitate President Joe Biden's speech. So how did you get her to do all of those? How did you discover June? She has confidence in herself and she's just spectacular. So over to you, Ma. This is an interesting one. Number one, I like to think of myself as a full uh, housewife, even though I have my own you know, businesses here and there. I manage my daughter, you know, officially I manage her. I happen to be the one running her social media account. I also create the content for her. I also work around ideas and but then I put her in the know, okay, to know that okay, we have to do this and we're gonna have to do that. So then she knows. June loves telling stories. That was just how I discovered that she had those potentials. She loves telling stories, she loves to read. She would read a book and then tell the story afterwards. And sometimes she would even read the book and tell it exactly, you know, word for word as it is in the book. And I also discovered that she loves to imitate. She would watch the TV whenever there's a commercial or a radio commercial. You would be repeating what the personnel, the advertiser has said. And um, like, is this something about you that needs to be thought through that needs attention so the first thing is paying attention to your child children have the capacity to be multitasking so you may have a child whose strength is in academics but then has a hidden talent it's up to that parent to discover it you know because they are kids they may have this gift but are unable to tell if oh this is something that they should pursue so it is you the adult who needs to help them nurture help develop it help manage it you know she imitates remarkable personalities uh, so one day this was in 2020 she mimicked a dstv commercial unknowing to her i was watching her and then i personally follow kadi b and i saw a video of kadi b giving a vote of thanks for her award and i invited june to come watch that's when i popped the question if she could mimic the songstress and her answer was yes then came president joe biden inaugural speech and amanda goman's poem the hill we climb so same thing she watched it memorized the words and she recited it you know by heart incredible so yeah i saw a potential a gift a talent 
So later on, I asked her how she was able to pull that off, you know, because I was astonished. Never in my wildest dream that a seven-year-old would be able to do what she did. I can't. I thought about my age. I cannot, you know, I cannot memorize a full page. Talk more of, of uh, 27 paragraphs of President Joe Biden's inaugural speech and reciting the whole poem of Amanda Gorman. So that for me was incredible. Really incredible. So therefore, I realized that this was one potential that beckons attention, one that money can't buy. So I swung to action to help nurture and manage her skill. So June is an auditory learner. She learns fastest by hearing and listening. You know, she stores information by the way it sounds, which made it easier for me to assist her when it came to memorizing spoken instructions. I figured June had monologued other people's intellectual work and thought it would be great to have her recite spoken words of her own. So I encouraged her. It was tough. I had sleepless night. I can imagine. <laughs> sleepless night. But it was worth it anyway. I feared that she wouldn't be able to do something of her own because let's not forget that some of these intellectual properties of other people have copyright. So there isn't much you can do about using their work. So I thought, okay, since she had the ability to recite, that's just my first impression and identity of my daughter was that she had the ability, she could recite. So will it matter if she wrote a poem of her own or that I hire someone to put words together for her so she can recite it. So I sat her down and I said, okay, Joe, Children's Day is around the corner. Would you want to consider writing something which you would then recite, you know, make it a poem? And she began, but then it was more like three to four sentences, five sentences, then it became a paragraph. And then at some point I've had to correct her. Okay, no, let's switch this word for that word. That sentence should come below and so on and so forth. Then I had it sent to my former assistant, to my former employee, who also happens to be a very good writer to review. You, June's writer, and he made some corrections. And all June had to do was read, memorize, and then she recited it. And it turned out to be a very beautiful poem. Her first poem was The Dawn of Today, which was for Children's Day to celebrate, to commemorate children all over the world. And then it also happened that at that time, at the period when we were preparing to have her recite her poem, there was the child abuse, child sexual abuse, child rape issues happening in our society society, in our country, you know, communities. So in the past, in 2019, June lended her voice for a six-year-old who had been raped and uh, who died in the process. When it became obvious that this child rape, child sexual abuse and assault and was becoming very rampant, it was becoming a norm in uh, the society, I thought it wise to, to have her write a poem in that regard. So that gave room for talk all of which were released to commemorate Children's Day. Okay, so she has two poems of her own titled The Dawn of a New Day and Talk. You're just an amazing mother. Now, how can parents or guardians build and boost their child's confidence? Well, the first step is to pay attention to what your child does well and enjoys. What your child does well and enjoys. Help them develop their strength by encouraging and supporting them. As a child, at some point, I put up a post on my Facebook page and talked about my childhood. June reminds me of me as a child. I have had the characteristics to be an entertainer. As a child, I mimicked my elders. I mimicked some of my family members and it just didn't sit well with some of them they thought i was making a mockery of them and so i got punished uh, many times you know i got punished many times i would watch a movie and then play it out 
at home and assign the characters to family members. You know, my dad, he was married to six wives. You can imagine the size of my family. So when I watch a movie, I assign a character to any of the wives or any of the kids that I think befits that role. I get punished for it. Our Nigerian setting, <laughs> mimicking elders can be seen, you know, can be perceived as uh, disrespectful, really. So I see, I see me in June. Hence, it was very quick for me to jump onto my discovery and give it my everything, give it my resource, give it my time, give it my heart, give it my soul, if I may say. So yeah, the first thing is to pay attention to what your child does well and enjoys. Help them develop their strength by encouraging and supporting them. Focus on their strength than weakness. This helps make them feel good about themselves, which improves behavior. But do not overdo it. Overpraising kills those potentials more. So you need to be able to balance it where you think you need to call the attention because if you are not careful, they may take the wrong path and forget that they need to carry every aspect of their development along. That includes their academics. That includes education. You will agree that even as adults, when we start making money for ourselves, we start generating revenue, income for ourselves, we tend to say, okay, this thing can wait while I focus on that that brings in money. So it's very, very important to not overdo it. Yes. So let them take um, healthy risk, which is also part of the ways with which a parent can support their kids, let them take risk, encourage them to pursue their interests, you know, fully. And um, I also like to add that when June goes for an interview, sometimes she flinches and I say to her, go girl. So you need to hype. You are the high person. Hype mom, hype dad, hype man. You need to be there to encourage them where others are not praising them for a job well done, even if it is not well done. You are there to say you did it. You did your best. You may not have won, but rest assured that this was an experience for you and that you can do better. I said to her, I need not tell you what to say. As a parent, like I stated, you need to let them take healthy risk. So you are not always at the background telling them what to say, what to do. Let them, you know, give them the chance to do what they want, that it is healthy. It is a positive want of theirs. Else they will always depend on your support, looking for you to tell them what to say, even when they have to reply a question during an interview, that they can think for themselves. So you need to let them take healthy healthy risk. An example is if you've watched the interview between Miss Nigeria and June plus her interview with uh, Bidu on the move on AIT, you will feel a sense of what I have just explained. I already knew to walk this path, um, her confidence needs to be built on 101%. You know, when a child feel confident and secure, they are more likely to succeed and achieve personal goals, especially in school, work and in their business. Wow, this is awesome. Pay attention to what your child loves and enjoys. Help them develop their strengths by encouraging and supporting them. Focus on their strengths than weaknesses, okay? Let them take healthy risk. I love that. Encourage them to pursue their interests and you need to hype them. Oh, hype mom, hype dad. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to ask, what are the benefits of building your child's confidence? Okay, number one. Confidence helps children confront and resist peer pressure. When a child is confident about himself, herself, it gives room for positive self-image. They experience freedom from self-doubt and negative thoughts about themselves. It's important to let them know failing does not mean total failure. Encourage them to try new things. Before my time is up, I like to let you all know that June, apart from being a reciter, a young poet, upcoming, you know, we're still working on it. Yes, she's a model, okay, a professional model. In the course of uh, her journey, she has modeled for several brands. In 2021, she did less representation of some of the brands she had modeled for in 2020. While that took a downturn on building her career as a model, 
That was the same time that I discovered her ability to recite, to memorize, to read, tell stories, and so on and so forth. Although it has been there, but I had the time to actually look closely and then I gave it the necessary attention. So let them know that they can try new things. If one thing is not working, they can try other things that may work. But it is not to close the chapter, close the door on their previous interest. It is to carry them along because it is not a strange thing to have an individual who probably in their youth or probably growing up to say they want to be a doctor but ended up being a lawyer. So that's it, okay? Carry them along. These are non-academical skills that you find even in schools where you have curriculum, co-curriculum, yes, co-curriculum, where you have a child in Taekwondo, you have a child also, the same child is also in drama class, the same child is... So you carry them along, eventually they will find, you know, their happy place. They will find what they are very passionate about and then follow through. So yes, let them know not to be upset okay when they fail let them know not to be upset not to be angry everything has its time when they make mistakes please dear parents it is written that without doubt the number one most psychologically damaging thing we as parents can say to a child is i don't love you anymore probably because of the many times they have disappointed you probably because of the many times they have failed probably because they have not put in their best in the way you expected and then boom you're saying oh i don't love you you know just to make them feel pain you know have regrets but hey these things eventually you know there's a saying an african adage that says that a child does not forget the knock given to him or her by an elder so they would not forget they won't forget that word so let's try as much as possible to not say these words to them you know i don't love you or that they were a mistake telling a child oh yeah uh, you were a mistake like some people will say so also we need to be reminded that damaged children become broken adults it is very necessary that we are always speaking onto our kids using the right words kind words loving words because they will also grow up and become adults and would have offsprings they will have children and you would want them to pass on that legacy onto their children so yes this is my take on today's discussion with you i hope that parents who have listened to me would have learned a thing or two or even more from how i was able to develop harness my daughter's potentials i'm still looking forward to more she's just um, an embodiment before now before the lockdown i will take her for piano lessons and june only had to be taught once and she will play the keyboard without even looking at her music book whatever she does she does it with a passion she does it with keen interest she does it to the best of her ability there are many kids like her out there do they have the support do their parents even want to support them do their guardians want to support them as a parent i know that education comes first but some of the achievers today in the world great 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 achievers today in the world hardly had degrees but we are in africa africa education is very important because of our economy because of you know the, the poor state of families you know it's the key to breaking out of poverty but for me i believe so much in education but then again i also believe so much in developing one's talent because they are tools with which one can use to make a living so parents please give your children a chance help them if you have a child who loves to make hair go for it help them if you think they have to be in class they have to be in school yes by all means but also remember that it is also possible to have both hands doing different things So thank you all for listening. Thank you for having me, Miss Nora. I truly appreciate. Okay, bye-bye for now. So much lessons today. So so much. Amazing June, amazing mother. Thank you so much for having you today on the program. God bless you, mother and daughter. And I most sincerely appreciate our listeners also. Thank you for sticking with us today on the program. Okay, so we'll come your way again same time next week. I'll leave you with this quote. I am who I am, not what you think I am, 
not who you want me to be i am me and this is courtesy lifehack.org everybody has talent ensure that you discover your child's talent as a parent or guardian they may not really know how to go about it but that is why you are called a guardian that is why you are there to prevent them thank you so much once again for joining us and let's do it one more time next week till i come your way again my name is nora adebola i believe that i